We're breaching doors and deploying smoke grenades. That's right, it's Six Siege the board game from Mythic Games. In this tactical takedown of teams, two to four players command two squads of elite forces, each made up of operators. If one team can either eliminate all the operators on the opposing side, or complete their mission objectives all within the allotted time frame, they win the game. Today, we're setting up for a two-player game from the basic Six Siege rulebook, but additional modes for up to four players and a special ops mode are available in the full game. Setup begins with the selection of teams. One player takes the role of attacker and the other as defender. Attackers will attempt to breach the defender's position. Next, choose a mission from the available types in the mission guide. You got control, bomb, or hostage. Let's choose the consulate control mission today since that's an introductory scenario for Six Siege. Follow this setup instructions in the mission guide by placing the appropriate environment board in the center of the table. Place the device with the handy Six Siege app nearby along with the line of sight rulers and the hit dice. Form a general supply with tokens and markers along with the overlays. Place the round tracker token on the zero space of the round tracker. Next, set up the mission and the board by placing all the obstacles of their appropriate size in the obstacle locations and all of the components as listed in the mission guide. These will include tokens for the objectives, barricaded doors and windows, cameras, and more. Next, set up the squads. We'll use the pre-made squads from the mission guide, but players are welcome to assemble five of their own operators as they please. Take the matching profiles and place an activation token on each face up. Each player takes a tactical inventory board and a personal supply of a reroll token, overwatch markers and tokens, and standees. The attacker also gains three charge cubes and a drone token to the drone inventory. Players then use their charge cubes to secretly select five gadgets on their board. Simultaneously, they both reveal their choices. Finally, players take the charge cubes for each of their operators and the components for any selected gadgets for the game. Using the Six Siege app, select a game speed. You've got Initiation, Calm, Standard, or Extreme. Players can select a time for themselves, so in this way, veteran players can compete against beginning players, giving themselves a shorter prep time. For your first few games, select the beginner or initiation speed. Prior to gameplay, follow the deployment step, which begins with the defender. For most missions, a ready-to-play deployment is available, and that's what we've set up today. When playing with your own deployment, the defender must deploy their operators and gadgets to the board anywhere except the outer spaces. Operators on the attacker's side are represented by miniatures, and defenders are first represented by two hidden operator tokens. For more on custom deployment, see page 8 of the rulebook. Let's look at an operator's profile. Each includes a name and art, weapon ranges and hit dice, special gadgets, and run, destroy, and stamina values. Gameplay occurs over five rounds, each divided into five phases. Attacker's first activation, defender's first activation, attacker's second activation, defender's second activation, and end of round. First up, in the attacker's first activation, the attacker moves the round tracker forward one space while the defender starts the attacker's timer on the app. The attacker then activates up to three operators of their choice. Once they've chosen their actions, they begin the timer to begin the defender's first activation. The attacker then activates up to three operators of their choice. Once they've resolved their actions, they tap the timer to begin the defender's first activation. These steps are repeated for the second activations of both players, but note that if all the operators left on the board were activated in the first phase, the player's second phase is skipped. Let's look at activating an operator. First, the player flips the activation token of the chosen operator. An operator who has completed their activation cannot be activated again in the round. That operator can then perform a move action plus two other unique actions. Let's look at some of the options. Move allows the operator to move their mini up to five movement points. 
Each point equals one space on the board. Movement can occur in any direction, including diagonally, and is only obstructed by structural elements and opposing squads. An operator cannot in their movement in a space with an operator or obstacles. Movement can be split between actions, and a few things like breaches and obstacles require an additional point of movement to traverse. Moving between levels on the entryway spaces require one movement point as well, provided the corresponding entrance is open. Positioning is very important in Six Siege. Operators can also spend a point to lean, giving an operator line of sight on a space while still remaining protected by walls or obstacles. Straightening up also requires a movement point. Run is an action that provides an additional amount of movement points as listed on the operator's profile. Shoot is an action that an operator can use on another operator, provided they have line of sight. This is a simple concept that requires an operator to have an unobstructed line between themselves and their target space, not just the mini base. But there are some stipulations which are explained on page 23 of the rules. Taking a shoot action allows the player to pause that timer, announce the shooter and the target, and whether they have protection. Players may at this time issue a challenge if they think the shooting conditions have been miscalculated. Next, calculate the distance between the shooter and the target by totaling the spaces to determine the range category as listed on the operator profile. The player then rolls the appropriate number of hit dice. Protections mitigate hits depending on their strength. Two for light or three for heavy. The final total hits apply to the target who takes a wound token for each one. If an operator takes wounds equal to or exceeding their stamina, they are eliminated and flipped face down. Any operators that have been hit are also located. More on what that means in a second. Remember to restart the timer after the shoot action is resolved. Destroy allows an operator to remove a gadget or other item from the board in their line of sight, depending on the destruction symbol and rating on their profile. Some specifics exist for each item that can be destroyed. See page 19 in the rulebook for details. Overwatch allows an operator to cover an area or space during the opposing squad's action. Orient the miniature in the orthogonal direction they overwatch, fitting an overwatch marker in front of their base. This denotes a 180 degree arc of unobstructed line of sight. Overwatching on the upper floor provides bonuses to covering the entryway space. See page 20 for details. Any opposing operators that either move into or complete an action in the line of sight trigger an option for the overwatching operator to repost. A repost is a free shoot action for that operator. Use gadget. This action allows players to use their gadgets, either special, located on their profile board, or tactical, from the inventory board. Remove the applicable charge cube from that gadget and apply its effects, either hits, overlays, or other gameplay effects. Examples include impact grenades, which deal hits in a space and one adjacent, breach charges, which destroy destructible partitions, flashbangs, which stun other operators, and more. The round culminates when both timers have expired or a player has tapped end of round. If the mission objectives have been completed at this step, tap end of game to see the results. If not, begin the upkeep step for the next round by removing located markers, stunt markers, and overlays from the board. Flip operators' activation tokens and record any eliminated operators in the app. This will determine the activation time for the next round. Some other important game mechanics, operators can be hidden or located. Hidden operators are represented by two hidden operator tokens and are limited to three actions, move, run, and overwatch. Additionally, only one of these tokens is the actual operator, the other is a decoy. Until revealed by line of sight or some other action, hidden operators' true locations are only known to their player. Once it's revealed, that operator becomes located.
Challenges. When the line of sight rules are in question for either player, they may issue a challenge. Play is immediately paused, if not already, and the old line of sight rulers come out. Starting from the central dot on the operator space to the dot on the target space, check to see if line of sight is valid. This process may require you to move some game pieces, which should be replaced after the challenge. If the line of sight turns out to be valid, the player who was wrongfully challenged chooses to either add 30 seconds to their own timer or deduct 30 seconds from their opponent. However, if the line of sight is invalid, the successfully challenging player gets to add 30 seconds to their own timer or deduct 30 from their opponent. Gameplay continues with players activating operators, shooting opponents, using gadgets, and completing objectives. A player wins once either all of the opponent's squad is eliminated or they've completed all of their own objectives. And that's the basics of Six Siege. More rules for gameplay modes and missions exist in the full rulebook. I'm Becca Scott, and you can watch me and all of my many outfits explain this game and other awesome games right here on Nerdist. We'll see you around.